afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Rafi. I'm going to talk about uh, debugging a live Glacier file system using a special directory called uh, Meta. Meta. So uh, before jumping into the agenda, I'll introduce myself. Uh, I'm Rafi, a software engineer at, at Red Hat. I've been uh, at Red Hat for three years, almost three and a half years. Uh, I've worked in uh, components like RDMA, which is remote direct memory access, and snapshot, and then tiering, and then replication. Uh, this is pretty much about me. Let's see what we have for today. So we'll have a quick overview of Glacier, and then uh, the architecture of Glacier as in um, like an overview, because it involves uh, like a demo. Mo mo most of the most of the talks involves a, a demo. So I'll in uh, I'll I'll explain the architecture a little, little bit, and then I'll introduce about the meta translator, uh, and then the basic commands it provides. And then more advanced um, uh, options through the metallic frames information, memory information, and the graph information, and uh, the translator like master translator. And then finally, uh, we'll end up a session with uh, the future enhancement and then question, question answer session. Yeah. So, so as everyone knows, Glacier is a distributed file system. It's a software defined network attached to storage. Uh, it has multiple nodes which participates in a cluster to provide one single namespace that can be accessed via Glacier native clients or uh, NFS clients or SMB. Or we have written our own uh, libraries called libgf API. You can access Glacier volume using either of these uh, access methods. And yeah, it, it works either through TCP IP protocol or RDMA protocol. Uh, yeah, so Glacier has a very uh, modular architecture. So how it is achieved is using something called as a translator. A translator is a module which gets an input and it operates on that input and it passes the, that uh, information and the input into the next translator. So uh, all of the Glacier uh, process or binaries are, work, are working based on a graph, something called as a graph. A graph is nothing but a collection of uh, a collection of translators. So. So I have a I have a picture here. It, it's it's a it's a picture for a Glacier mount process and a server process as well. So how, what it does is, for let's say a file system operation. When a file system operation starts, uh, for example a read operation, it starts from the kernel VFS layer and then it will be given to the user space fuse uh, process, which is this process here, and then uh, we have something called as translator, which is this one. Uh, so this is the graph we have. So the graph is uh, is a representation of uh, multiple translator. So this process works based on this uh, graph. So let's say a read operation comes on from the VFS. It will be given to the first translator on the graph, and then it does its operation. For example, in the first uh, here, the first translator is the IO cache, which is nothing but like the page caching. So let's say a read operation comes. So uh, on, a, on an offset, so the IO cache translator checks whether the whether there is any page hit on on already cached uh, contents. So if it has a page uh, hit, then it serves from here itself, and then will be given the data into the back to the B VFS. Otherwise, what it does is it creates a page fault, and then it will given uh, the the read call into the next translator, and it flows from here to here. And this is a distributed translator which does the distribution for the glacier. And we have a replica translator which does the replica. Let's say we have a, a forward uh, distribution, which means you will have a, a for child for the distributed translator. Translator. Let's say we have a three-way replication, which means you will have a three uh, child for the replica translator. That's how it works. And then the client process will be given to the server. And uh, and on the uh, on the return path, let's say you have you read the content from this disk, then it will flow from here to till all the way to the VFS. And then let's say for this IO cache, it creates that um, it is it shows that newly created page. And it works uh, in, in on the next uh, read call. It serves from this one. This is the basic architecture for the Glacier, and this is the uh, translator model. So uh, uh, I explain is because uh, when we debug the Glacier, uh, we have to look into the different different uh, translators, what options they have providing, and how we can look into the options, uh, uh, the file system specific frames and uh, latencies, all those things. That's the reason why I explained this um, big uh, architecture level informations. 
Okay. So now uh, talking about the translate, meta translator, which is the main talk for this. Uh, so it is it provides a dynamic information about a mount process. Let's say we have a fuse mount process uh, that accessing a glacier volume. What it does is it provides a dynamic if information like um, uh, like the memory information, uh, what are the file system operation is ongoing, uh, and what what are the internal operation that resulted, let, let's say a read operation or let's say a rename operation which involves a lock internally. So what are the operation is ongoing through um, uh, through the glacier mount process? All the all those kind of dynamic information you can fetch through the uh, this special directory. So it's very similar to uh, Linux procfs. You might already know about Linux procfs. It it, uh, it gives the kernel level memory informations and uh, process wise like the open fds all this information for a kernel uh, for a linux uh, operating system so it's very similar to the uh, procfs file system it uh, what meta does is it, it in the glacier root there is a hidden directory called the dot meta uh, it's not only hidden but it's also virtual because it, which means you cannot see that directory even if you do ls or ls minus or you can't see this meta directory because we don't want to return any of the readerp calls uh, this dot meta cannot should not be returned to uh, the application layer because if, if at all you are doing a cp or r minus rf that dot meta directory should not be exposed into the top layer so that's why it's a hidden plus virtual you cannot see if you are just doing cd to dot meta you can uh, you, you can uh, you can go to the into that directory but you won't see that directory in any of this listing so so that's uh, and yeah so as i said it's a translator so uh, rating a, a new feature in glacier is very simple you need to rate a translator and it put it into the appropriate appropriate position in the graph so this translator but this is a special translator it is not actually present in the graph but it's automatically loaded into every mount process every mount uh, process in the glacier it is automatically added so you cannot see in the uh, graph but it, it is automatically added and this is useful for debugging purpose and as well as the monitoring because what you can do is you can see the latency or uh, latency for each of the uh, file system calls you can see those uh, how much is the latency for each translator through the meta translator and uh, the du information disk usage for each server you can see those information using this translator so uh, the good thing about it is that you don't need to do anything you don't need to alter you don't need to send any signals to the process you can just access through a directory uh, a file directory structure so uh, like you don't need to put a any system tab or gdb to get all those information it, it gives high level information like what are the frames frame information for each calls so uh, i'll do uh, i'll start with the basic commands for the meta translator so i'll switch into uh, so I'll give you the. Uh, I have a volume here. This is a very simple volume. Uh, it's uh, the volume name is called Patchy. It's a distributed replicator volume, and uh, it's a two-way replicator and a two-way distributed. That's two cross two. These are the servers. Uh, the volume is started. You can see here. So the volume is added, all the volumes are running. So what I am going to do is I'm going to mount this process. So I'm going to mount this as mount minus t glacier FS. I'll just uh, quickly test this. So I'm going to mount this into slash mnt. I'm going to mount a glacier volume called Apache into slash mnt. These are the mount options. The event history on is means uh, the eventing uh, for the, the file system operation eventing is turned on for this mount process. Uh, OK. So I'm sorry, it's already mounted. I'll first unmount. So it's already mounted. Sorry. So this is the mount point. Uh, there is nothing in here. So uh, so now if you do LL, you can't see this uh, dot meta directory. LS, yeah. Sure. Sure, sure. I'll also increase the. Uh, this is the box. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, okay. So if you do ls, you can't see that. Even ls minus uh, lrta. It 
you can't see that dot meta directory because it's a virtual directory. So, but if you do cd to dot meta, it is now moved into the dot meta. If you do pwd, you can see it's currently in the slash mnt, slash mnt in dot meta. Now, we, we can see uh, what are the information um, dot meta provides. So, I'll start with the simple things. So, if you do ls, sorry, if you do ls, you can, see, okay, I'll do one thing, I'll make it ll. So, you can do this command line arguments, uh, memory information, process latency, UUID of the process version. So, I'll start with the uh, version. So, version is very simple. It, it provides the GlacierFS version as a, as a JSON, uh, JSON uh, uh, format. It's actually there are, I mean, it is there, it's actually. So, the package version is 3.10.10. So, and then you can see the command line arguments. Uh, So you can see the command line arguments which this mount process is started. Which the, the process is user lock and a local has been glacierfs and the argument is uh, the history is on and the world file server which is which means the server uh, host name and then the uh, volume ID which is the vo vo volume name and then the mount point. This is the, uh, proce this is the process which is started. And then uh, the the other information about the logging. So, um, in most cases, we wonder wh wh where, where is the logging file is. So, if um, sometimes you can configure it uh, through the command line when the process starts, or you can configure it with volume inf volume options. But if you don't know, you don't need to uh, you don't need to search for this volume file. What you can do is you can just go to the dot meta directory. Then there is there will be a logging uh, directory here. So you can just go to here, and then you can see the oh, sorry. Okay, so so here you can see a log file, which is nothing but a symlink to the actual log file. So if you want to see the log file, you can just go to the meta directory and uh, you can view ls or whatever it is to the log file. So now you can see the log file. So if you don't know about the log, where, where, where exactly the log file is stored, but you can just go to the meta directory and see the log file. And n another important thing about the log log is uh, let's say you have multiple uh, client process for a Glacier volume. Let's say thousands of uh, uh, client process are there for a single volume, uh, which means you can have a log level for uh, your um, log file, like uh, debug log, trace log, um, and uh, you know uh, critical logs. But you, you can also change it, configure it, like um, uh, through a Glacier commands, you can change that log level into trace or debug or warning. But that changes the log level for all the clients. Let's say you want to debug a particular um, um, client process. You cannot just uh, make it, you cannot just change the log level for a single process. Of course, you can restart the process with the uh, uh, log level as a debug or trace, but it, it requires a restart. So how do you change log level of a single uh, client process? Th that you can do using this log level. So there is a there is a file called the log level. So you can see what it has. So, the, okay, sorry. Sorry. So it's locking the system. <coughs> okay, so actually it is there. I don't know how to adjust it. So the log level is actually uh, one right, uh, seven right now. You can change the log level. Like the log level, the, there is a log level number for uh, trace. It's eight. For um, uh, info, it is seven. So something like that. So to change the log level, what you need to do is you can you have to write uh, the log level number into the log uh, into this file log level file. So let's say uh, currently the uh, currently it has the log level of seven, which is written there, but it's not uh, it's not displaying it. Uh, but uh, I'll just do a demo, like uh, changing that log, le log level into a eight, which is trace. Uh, there is a documentation. What are the numbers for each log level? So what you can do is you can change the log level through this interface. So now the data is written, and you can see the log level as <coughs> eight here. And now what are the changes it has? Is 
Now if you select log file and the below, you can see it is started printing the debug logs. Okay, so that's one information. Okay, I'll quickly move. So the uh, that's about the logging. Uh, other things, uh, yeah, the process UUID. So the process UUID is each uh, client process has a unique identifier. So that uh, that information can be fetched through this process UUID. Process UID. This is the process UID for this client process. How this is helpful is, let's say you have thousands of clients, which means uh, the information about a particular uh, event on the client through in the server logs is logged through using the process UID. Let's say if you, if you take, uh, okay, I'll just copy this one, and if you if you take uh, client uh, the server logs is stored here in the as a brick. See. If you search that uh, thing, you can see the logging, like uh, the logging for this client, like uh, the, it, it says accepted client from this uh, mount point. So let's say you have thousands of clients. There, there will be thousands of la lanes like this that the, the connection is esta establishment has already happened or the disconnect has happened with all with the process UID. So if you want to know whether the connection happens or disconnection happens, you just need to take the process UID and search uh, that process UID in the server <laughs> graph. And also when when uh, when um, when client makes a log locking into the servers, if you want to know which, uh, when especially when you debug a um, uh, a deadlock kind of scenarios or a locking issue. You want to see which client is has taken a lock from the uh, servers. So in that case, uh, the locking has done with this pro process UID. So uh, you take the process UID and search in the log uh, in the locking translator which lock in uh, which client has taken the lock. So th uh, you can use the process UID for that uh, for those kind of informations. Uh, the other thing is uh, memory information. Yeah, that's very important. So you can see the memory information through uh, this meta interface. So if okay, I'll go to the front. I'll open through this one. See. Yeah. So for a Glacier uh, process, for a Glacier client process, you can see what are the memories this Glacier uh, mount points as used using this uh, method, uh, method interface, uh, and that's through the mat info uh, file. So it says what are the arenas, it's, it's already allocated, uh, uh, the blocks, the mem mapped informations, and um, yeah, the free uh, blocks, <laughs> things like that. And, and, and also, uh, from these allocated uh, spaces for the memory for this process, you can also see what are the what are the data stretches. How the, uh, the, the particular data stretches? How much memory it is it has already used? Like uh, this, this is a uh, this is a uh, data type. Uh, data structure which is used in Glacier and how much says it is it has already consumed. Let's say you have a, let's say you have um, a memory leak uh, uh, problem in Glacier and you are debugging it. Then you can uh, look into this uh, for uh, into, look, you can look into this information and see what is what is the maximum says you uh, what what is the maximum says allocated for each. Uh, data types, and you can see um, when there is a memory leak, you you could see uh, one data type or one or two data type is using a lot of spaces, and the, that's why you can understand which translate which data type is using uh, this information. This is a global uh, this is a global uh, data structure, and it's th there is also a translator specific data structure that you can see th when we look into the graphs. Okay, and. Uh, yeah. So now I'll I'll I'll, I'll introduce about the I'll talk about the master translator then because we don't have much time left. So this is the translator for the fuse uh, fuse bridge. So all the information about latency. So to see uh, the latency information, what we can first we what we can do is we can start uh, some operation on the uh, mount point. Then I'll do go into a different terminal and go to here and uh, dot meta directory and then master translator. So if you can see, we are here at the in the mount point dot meta translator and the master translator. 
and here what we have is a history. What history is, what are the operation as going, what, are, what is the operation is happening on the mount point. If you, if you, if you see the history, you can, you can see what is, what is the operation is going on, uh, on, on, on a fuse mount. So it says, for example, it has a time and what are the operation is going on. Uh, so this is like uh, on an I node sending an invalidation operation and this is an open on this uh, directory because we we did a uh, we did a open into that um, uh, we did a open in the history that is the uh, last operation lobe and you can see the other inf uh, other f stat on the Linux. So all those uh, operations the fuse operation you can see the history through this interface uh, that is one and um, yeah. So, and as I as I, uh, as I already told you about the uh, the profiling information, so you can see uh, how much uh, information. Okay, I think the profiling has turned on. Sorry. So you can see a uh, measure latency things. So you can you can enable the measure latency thing by writing one into this one. So then uh, now it will take some time to measure the latencies. Uh, but let us see if it is already here. If it already turned on, you can see what are the, uh, yeah, but it it will take some time. So basically you can see if you if you turn on measure latency into if you turn on that option you can see each latency through this interface. Currently it was turned off so it is showing 0. Uh, the other things is the options uh, the options of each translator. So you can see the graph information through this interface which is there will be a directory called graphs. You can go into graphs and see you, you will have all the available, all the graph histories in the graphs. Let us say a graph means as I said it is a collection of translator. So when you disable a translator it, it is like a new graph because you have removed one node from the graph. Let us say you disabled a caching translator which means you have a new, uh, you have a new graph. Uh, so that information you can see from this. What are the uh, what are the graphs, uh, the graph history and everything, and what is the active graph? So I can show you a demo for that. Like cluster volume set um, performance. There is a, a translator called a right behind. If it, oh, sorry, you have. There is a translator called. A, <coughs> There is a transfer code right behind which does the rate uh, in the background. So I turned off that gra uh, 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 that performance translator, which means you, the graph has changed it because this uh, translator is now removed from the graph. So you can see the old graph information through the meta. So, so you see now th there were only two entries earlier, uh, j j just one this Rafi. Now you have two because th this is an active one which is uh, similar to the already existing active graph. Now you can see one more graph is the old graph. So if you go into the, if you go into the, if you go into the active, active graph you can't see the rate behind here but uh, if, you, if you go to the, if you go to the old, uh, old graph uh, you can see uh, that information. It's so if you <coughs> see here, you can see right behind here, right behind here, but you can't see that right behind in the latest active graph. So all those informations, like what are the current graph and the previous graph, all those information can be fetched through this interface. Yeah. Okay. So the okay. So I'm uh, winding up the session uh, with. Uh, so I explained about the inf memory information like uh, this is an explanation of uh, uh, the each lanes what it each lane means says and the number of allocation and the memory information what is each lane means so you can refer it into this one and I'll talk about the future and then we'll just find out yeah sure uh, 
so what we are planning as a future for this translator is we are uh, planning to uh, give a few, uh, future like a free and a drop cache through this meta translator. Let's say uh, Gluster has a lot of translator for caching. So uh, each translator stores um, metadata information or so caches metadata information. So you can see what are the um, uh, caching uh, memory, how much cache memory is used, and you can also do a drop cache, um, uh, or you can also do a drop cache to uh, drop all the caching from the Glacier mount process that is we, we are planning as a future we are um, and yeah um, okay I'm done uh, any questions Sorry, no time. Okay. <laughs> if you have questions for Rafi I'm sure he'll be around at the Gluster booth um, <laughs> thank you